So let's move on to some business news now on the programme. We're beginning some uh, highly anticipated economic reforms. I am talking about Argentina, yes, the country uh, facing its worst crisis, of course, in decades. And Camille Knight is here from our business desk with more on it, Camille. That's right. It's been referred to as economic shock therapy, and it's kind of the first batch of measures aimed at rescuing the country's economy. The economy minister made the announcements just two days after Javier Millet was sworn in as Argentina's new president. They include deep cuts to public public spending, like the reduction in fuel and transport subsidies and the freeze of some major government contracts. But perhaps the most notable announcement, a dramatic devaluation of the country's currency, the peso. It's an attempt to tackle the triple-digit annual inflation that's already at 143%. Take a listen to what Economy Minister Luis Caputo had to say. We have inherited what we call a repressed inflation that is already unfurling, and that, as I explained earlier, is a consequence of the lag of the ultra-expansionary monetary policy of the last four years and of price controls that never work in the long run. For a few months, we will be worse off than before, particularly in terms of inflation. Now, Argentina will weaken its dollar over 50%. So just to give you an idea, before the announcement, one dollar was worth uh, just under 400 peso. That will now go up to 800 peso. With 40% of the population living below the poverty line, this will hugely impact people's purchasing power. Argentina is also facing hu huge amounts of debt. It owes the International Monetary Fund 44 billion dollars. The IMF welcomed the measures uh, announced by Caputo, calling them bold, but saying they would help create the environment for private sector growth. Two days after the French lower house of parliament rejected an immigration bill put forward by the interior minister, the threat of tougher measures still looms over on undocumented workers in France. On Tuesday, the government insisted it wouldn't give up on implementing stricter rules. Leo McGuinn takes a look at how this might affect some of these workers. Suleiman Barry is a 20-year-old immigrant who works as a baker in the northwest of France. He's been in the country for four years, arriving from Guinea in 2019, before becoming a full-time employee at this bakery. However, Suleiman faces expulsion from France. His request for a work permit has been turned down twice. My future began here. I've started my future here, and for me it's already a beginning. And this is an opportunity to continue. According to authorities, between 600 and 700,000 people currently live in France illegally. Suleiman's employer wants it to become easier for those like his employee to gain legal status and has started a petition online. When you have a guy like Suleiman, who is talented and has done his apprenticeship with us, we can only ask to be able to keep him. He doesn't really exist in the country. However, he is perfectly integrated. On Monday, the government's controversial immigration bill was rejected in Parliament. The bill aims to speed up asylum application procedures and regularise the status of undocumented workers in sectors with labour shortages, such as Suleiman. According to the official statistics agency, foreigners with or without work permits take up 22% of jobs in the Paris region, twice the national average. Now for a quick look at the markets. Over in Europe, markets mostly trading up on Wednesday, but relatively close to the flat line. Investors are anticipating the upcoming interest rate decision from the US Federal Reserve, which is expected to keep its benchmark borrowing rate steady. Over in Asia, meanwhile, most indexes here quite firmly in the red, uh, except for the Nikkei, which is trading up about a quarter of a percent. China stocks uh, leading declines on Wednesday as investors are digesting the economic priorities laid out by Beijing. And we end with Netflix, which has released almost all of its viewer data for the very first time. The streaming giant had faced criticism for not being transparent about how different content performed on the platform. In fact, it played a huge part in the Hollywood strikes this year, which paralyzed the industry for months. And the lack of transparency on the popularity of various shows had led to some distrust in the creator community, and some actors and writers were demanding higher royalties for shows that had performed well. 
co-chief executive uh, Ted Sarandos said Netflix had kept its viewer data private so it could experiment without giving too much away to competitors. And if you're curious about what shows did perform well on Netflix, here is the leaderboard for the first half of this year. Coming in first place, The Night Agent, which users watched for 812 million hours. We've also got season two of Ginny and Georgia, The Glory, Wednesday and Queen Charlotte. Non-English content uh, ge did generate about a third of all viewing and Netflix said that the data also shows there is still demand uh, for older title series like Friends, for example, also performing very well, Stuart. Mm, I think half of those are about uh, my three daughters, actually. <laughs> <laughs> 812 hours, I'm sure they've watched it for more than that. <laughs> Kemi Knight with the uh, Business Bulletin here on France 24.